For those of you that are pregnant, I hope you're concerned about which labor positions you want to get into for birth to help you to have the most intact pelvic floor afterwards. If you'll stay tuned, we're going to talk about the different positions and how they impact the pelvic floor. My name is Lynn Schulte. I'm the founder of the Institute for Birth Healing and today we're going to be talking about different laboring positions and their impact on the body and specifically the pelvic floor muscles. So the first position that um, is most common in the hospitals, especially if you have an epidural, is being on your back with your legs up in and possibly two people supporting them or maybe your legs are up in stirrups. Um, this is because, you, you know, if you have an epidural, you don't have any strength in your legs, although hospitals have been getting better about giving walking epidurals where you can have some use of your legs. When we are in this supine position, when we're on our backs, the, the pressure is on our sacrum here, and the sacrum really needs to lift backwards to get the baby out. And when we're on our back, it, it's really hard for that to happen. So as far as and then actually when we're supine the baby's actually has to go uphill a little bit to come on out so it's not the most ideal position for baby or your body but it's very convenient for your providers and it's very easy access for them to help that area and help the baby out um, but if you don't if you do have an epidural and you can use your legs a little bit I would recommend not being on your back so um, you know, when the sacrum can't move backwards, the whole pelvis has to lift upwards in order to get that baby out. So it's just more challenging to your body when we are on our backs. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with that is that if, you know, these are my le your legs, if you have providers that are holding your legs at different angles, that puts different torque on your pelvis as the baby's coming out. So if you are having people support your legs, please make sure, let someone else know this beforehand, that you want to make sure that the legs stay even, that the two people supporting the legs are keeping them in the same position, and that keeps your pelvis more balanced. So we don't want a lot of torquing and twisting um, on your pelvis while that baby is coming on and out. It's a potential for setting your, your pelvis up for dysfunction. Now, um, so that's supine. And as far as intact perineum, that one's okay. It's a little bit more challenging for the perineum because baby's going uphill, but there's no gravity, so it's pretty neutral. Now, what's even more neutral for the pelvic floor muscles is hands and knees. I love hands and knees. When you're in hands and knees, your pelvis has the ability to move and um, it's more stabilizing for your pelvis. So for those of you that have pelvic instability, being on your hands and knees, you can even be in supported uh, squat or supported kneeling um, on a ball or your partner's knees as he's sitting there. Um, tall kneeling is what we call it. So that is great because your pelvis is free to open up and do what it needs to and it's more stabilizing because you've got the support going through your legs into the pelvis. So hands and knees squatting that's great and you also get a little help from gravity so that's helpful. Now, another position that I'm not a big fan of is actually sideline. When we are sideline, the, the pelvis needs to open this way to get the baby in, and then it goes this way to get the baby out. And so these pelvic bones need to bend forward and backwards here, side to side. If we're on our side, then only the top bone moves, and it moves more than the bottom bone. So women who labor on their sideline, I see a lot of pelvic dysfunctions afterwards. So um, the, this, the top bone has to move more and this bone gets really anchored and can't move as much. So get a lot of um, in, uh, in asymmetries in the pelvis afterwards. So, um, but sideline is great for pelvic floor um, protection. Um, and uh, it, it's necessary. So again, just keep this information in mind, maybe even just after the birth, but um, you've got to get into whatever position your body needs to get the baby out. That's number one. Now, the, another position to get into is squatting, and squatting is great because it, again, your pelvis is free. Um, you are in a more um, open position for the pelvis, but actually squatting is the most challenging for your pelvic floor muscles. There's a greater potential for tearing in the squatting position. But what can decrease that is actually if you do a supported squat. 
So when we support our back, our low back, then our pelvis is still free to open. And sorry, I got a phone call here. Um, so uh, when our pelvis is free to open up, then um, baby can come out easier. We got gravity going on, but when we support our sacrum, it actually relaxes the pelvic floor muscles. So supported squatting with our low back supported, then that decreases the incidence of uh, trauma to the pelvic floor muscles. So when you are doing that, you wanna make sure that your support of the sacrum or of the low back is up here by your PSISs and not on your sacrum. We don't wanna be putting pressure here because that needs to open up as the baby's coming on out. So your pressure, your support needs to be in your low back as you're doing that. So um, supported squatting is actually better than regular squatting. So all this being said, remember, listen to your body, listen to your baby, and go into the position that feels right for you and your baby. That's priority number one. And the most important thing to remember is that there is help for you afterwards. Um, getting a baby, getting your body back after giving birth is really helpful uh, to know that you can do it, okay? And uh, letting your practitioners know what positions you went into labor can be really helpful for them understanding the mechanics of what happened to your pelvis during, during your labor. So uh, good luck with your birth. Uh, you're going to do great. Listen to your body. Listen to what feels right and what you feel like you need to do, and you'll be able to get that baby out, all right? Good luck, everybody. Take care.